pleasant day everyone. This is a group 3 and 4 presentation. The topic 3.3, the Cavite Mutiny. Two other figures of approximately the same generation as those just treated but without no direct contacts with contemporaries of events where Father Salvador Pons and Apolinario Mabini both spoke briefly about the events of 1872 in connection with their other writings. Pons was an Augustinian friar who first came to the Philippines in 1884, left his order in 1899 in Manila, and for the next decade spent much of his time in writing against the friar and co cooperating with the founders of Iglesia Filipina and the Piente. Finally, being reconciled with the Catholic Church, he re-entered the Augustinians and spent the rest of his life in a monastery in Germany. Since he retracted his anti-friar and anti-Catholic writings as a whole and spent much of the rest of his life in refuting them, all, all of his writing must be used with some cautions, particularly since those which may I some sense be qualified as a historical were composed in great haste and comparable carelessness and exaggeration. Since he retracted his anti-friar and anti-Catholic writings as a whole and spent much of the rest of his life in refuting them, all of his writing must be used with some caution, particularly since those which may in some sense be qualified as historical were composed in great haste and comparable carelessness and exaggeration. As was said almost publicly, the reason given that Burgess had incurred the ire of Recolitus by his defense of the right of the Filipino clergy and of the Dominicans by his just severely in refusing to give a passing grade to incapable friars when he act as a member of the board examiners for candidate for degree at the University of the Santo Tomas, given the many functual errors and open contradictions in the account, it may be safely ignored as an independent source and is independent of Plusio and or Regador. The biography of Gomez is similarly dependent on Regidor, as would seem to be shown by the erroneous statement that the former founded the Madrid newspaper La Verdad, exclusively dedicated to the defense of Filipino interests. La Verdad was, of course, the newspaper in which the attack of Filipino clergy to the Recoleto procurator in Madrid, Father Guillermo Agudo, were published provoking the Manifesto of Burgos in 1864. Mabini devotes one chapter of his posthumously published work a la Revolution Filipina to our subject, Causa Efecto de la Education de los Padres Burgos, Gomez Zamora. Mabini makes no claim to have had first-hand knowledge of the event, but without taking any position on the cause of the revolt, state clearly that the three priests were innocent of it. It was used by their enemies, principally the friars from the context, but supported by the government to bring about the execution of those three men who were martyrs to justice. Mabini's chapter is not narrative but rather a discussion of the place of the martyr's priest in the revolution. Hence, factual details are almost completely lacking, but from his reference to Burgos' protest of his innocence on the scaffold, it would seem that he is independent on the account of the Platchu, whose translation was published in La Solidaridad, while Mabini was intimately involved with the newspaper support in Manila. The works of one final author deserve special examination even though he cannot be considered a source in the strict sense. Manuel Artigas y Cuerva wrote, wrote extensively on Philippine history, more so perhaps than any other person in the first three decades after the revolution. Though he treated the event of 
1872 in various per periodical publication and as a part of book on border subject, his major work was Los Successus D. 1872. This book, though somewhat unsystematic in organization, is the fullest account of the Cavite mutiny and its background which has appeared up to the present. Moreover, Artigas reproduced in full of number of documents of the period not then previously published, though unfortunately, he gives no sources for these documents. Some at least are certainly which creates a strong probability that are Apart from these documents, Artigas has depended principally on the account of Rigodor, together with the alleged confession of Father Pernaveja and Ekhegoyen, which are reproduced in part in his book. He accepts all of the same authentic accounts in general. He facilitated in various glasses in his book as to the degree of confidence to be placed in them. In a succeeding chapter, on the other hand, he cites Rigidor for the assertion that the promoters of the mutiny. In support of this assertion, Artigas continues, Everything mentioned by Senor Regidor is rigorously exact. According to that testimony, we have gathered on our trips for some years past from several of those who were involved in the events of 1872. Artigas is apparently not aware that the rule of his key attribute to Father Juan Gomez on confirmation of Rigador is in contradiction with the rest of Bernaveja account which attributes the rule of impressionator to Father Claudio del Arco. Senior Regidor had this disadvantage as a writer, that he was not a researcher. He did not search for authentic data and relied much on that beautiful memory which Providence granted him, but which on occasions was unfaithful. Artigas Judges or from a tendency to dramatize his account. Being heavily dependent on Regidor, Artigas of course shares some of the former's weakness. The remark cited from Trinidad H. Pardo de Tavera that Artigas was a Cajon desastre is not completely unfair. True, he did attempt to apply historical criticism to his sources at times, as in the case of some of the extravagance and inconsistencies of Regidor. He cannot be termed a critical historian, as appears clearly from the contradictions mentioned above.
with Artigas, the published histories of the events of 1872 based on immediate knowledge or direct information come to an end. All subsequent books and articles on the subject were based on the sources which have been treated in this article. Apart from those making use of the Suedo Burgos forgeries, which began to appear shortly before the last war. The publication of various archival sources in the last few years and the proximity publication of others gives a new basis on which the reconstruct the history, but these documents have only an a supplementary value to us for and must be used in conjunction with the earlier account. One example may help to make this clear the genesis and development of the story of the Riculito Friar alleged to have impersonated Burgos in inciting the revolt in Cavite. In the almost simultaneous account from the Recoleto Father Agapito Echigoyen, the impostor is made out to be an unknown Franciscan, presumably under further prodding from his captors who saw the contradiction, Ichigoyen concedes that it could have been a Recoleto but still think it was an Franciscan. In support of this assertion, Artigas continues, Everything mentioned by Senor Regidor is rigorously exact. According to the testimony, we have gathered on our trips for some years past from several of those who were involved in the events of 1872. Finally, Artigas takes up both the regular version on the one hand and selections from the Pierna Vieja and the Echigoyan version on the other and combine them into one account. The foregoing analysis of these early accounts of the Cavite mutiny would seem to lead to the following conclusion as to the reliability of these sources and the relationship existing among them. Number 1 Number 2 Number 3 Number 4 Number 5 Number 6 Father Salvador Pons Apolinario Mabini Miguel Artigas Y. Suerba The end.